Hey friends, welcome to the OT Minute. My name is Arno. In today's video, we will be walking through what movement can be expected or is correlated with different levels of spinal cord injury. For example, if somebody has a C4 Asia A spinal cord injury, what movements might we expect for that individual to have? Now, why is movement important? Well, as you can probably guess, movement is an important and critical component of function. Therefore, as OTs or healthcare professionals, we really want to understand what movement might we expect a patient to have at different spinal cord injury levels so that we can best help to serve them, whether it's through the evaluation process, the treatment process, making adaptive equipment recommendations, and so forth. In this video, again, we will focus really on the movement that a person has at different spinal cord injury levels. However, if you're looking for more detail and a breakdown per spinal cord injury, what kind of adaptive equipment might we want to consider, what specific functional outcomes that we might expect or things like that and you want to get more into the, maybe the weeds uh, definitely let me know in the comment section down below I'd be happy to make a video on that if enough people uh, request it or would find that information helpful also be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll show you kind of a, just a really simple quick way to memorize all these levels and the different movements okay so let's dive into the specific levels so C1 through C3 will group together at this level a patient would probably have limited neck movement. This could include flexion, extension, rotation. Here they'll have some sternocleidomastoid, cervical paraspinal muscles, and the platysma that can help with those movements. When we move down to C4, really the big muscle that comes online is the diaphragm. Technically it's innervated C3 through C5. However, at C4 is when a person can move generally off of a ventilator and have deeper breathing because of better innervation of the diaphragm. Also important to note is at this level, there may be some scapular elevation of, and that's due to the upper trapezius coming online. Next we have C5. At this cervical level, a lot of things are starting to come online including things like the deltoids, some infraspinatus, teres minor, the biceps, the brachialis, the uh, brachioradialis, rhomboids, some serratus anterior. All of these things coming online allows for a lot of movements to start to emerge as far as the upper extremities go. So this includes stronger shrugs, uh, scapular retraction, some more shoulder movements, uh, elbow flexion, and even some supination. Now shoulder movement along with that elbow flexion is gonna be critical for uh, beginning that movement of bringing things up towards the face. For example, using a universal cuff to bring maybe a toothbrush towards the mouth or a spoon towards the mouth. All right, next we have C6. At this level, a person has even more shoulder movement. Um, this will include most likely stronger external rotation. A person would have increased supination and most importantly, improved wrist extension. The wrist extension will allow a person to start to work on achieving a tenodesis grasp, which is a grasp where a person can use wrist extension to compensate for impaired fine motor movement. At C7 now we have elbow extension, that means the triceps are coming online, which is critical for improving transfer independence. Wrist flexion is also associated with this level. Next we have C8 through T1. These levels are really important because at this point a person having an injury at this level would have fine motor coordination and strength and would have potentially the ability to button buttons, uh, maybe even tie shoelaces. This is obviously huge because now we're previously at maybe a C7 or C6. A person would have had to use compensatory strategies for you know, buttoning a shirt now they could potentially do that with their hands without adaptive equipment. Now, next we've got T2 through T12. At this level, really what we wanna be thinking is postural control, trunk stability, and this is a lot of the abdominal muscles, the external intercostal muscles and the erector spinae that's innervated at these levels, which is huge functionally because transfers get a lot easier, dressing, edge of bed, unsupported, all those types of things become easier. Now, while we're talking about the thoracic levels, we really can't talk about them without mentioning T6. T6 is a very important level for us to be aware of because we want to educate patients on autonomic dysreflexia. Anybody who's received an injury T6 or above would be at 
at risk. So be sure to educate yourself on that, to educate patients on that, because it is a life-threatening thing that can happen. And um, educate patients on how to recognize the signs of it early so that they can act quickly. And finally, we have L1 through S5. This innervates the bilateral lower extremities and the bowel and bladder. So very important levels as well. Now we can dive into a lot more detail when it comes to L1 through S5, going level by level. However, in today's video, we just want to kind of keep it brief. All right, friends, I know that was a lot to go through. So I wanted to now shift our attention a little bit to how do we memorize this content. And I just want to share the way that I do it. Again, you can probably find a million different ways to memorize this information. But I just want to share what was helpful for me because I know this can be feel quite a bit overwhelming if you're studying this for the first first time or you've tried to study this and it just, you know, it's easy to forget. Um, so I found this to be helpful for me personally. It's just a kinesthetic way to learn. Usually I'm a visual learner, but this information, it just made sense to actually do the movements along with the different spinal cord levels. And I'll show you what that means. So for example, C1 through C3, what I do is I just do a simple head shake, understanding that neck movement is what can be expected at that level. For example, C4, now we go into a deep breath with some scapular elevation. And that's how we remember that the diaphragm starts to get stronger and we're starting to see some um, upper trapezius um, movement and scapular elevation emerge. For C5, I move to this position here where I do a little abduction or scaption of my shoulders. I do some flexion and then I just keep my hands in a supinated position, understanding that at this level we're getting some shoulder movement, we're getting elbow flexion and that supination. And this is gonna be again key for trying to help a patient or client work on self-feeding or hygiene with maybe a wrist support and a universal cuff or something uh, along that those lines. Now moving from C5 to C6, we go from this position and that we add wrist extension and that's what's the key um, movement I think at C6 that you want to memorize because again this is what leads to um, tenodesis. So at this level you really want to work on keeping those flexor tendons of the fingers tight so that when somebody does the tenodesis grip that that grip can be as tight as possible. So you don't want to stretch out the fingers so that when they do a, a tenodesis they get a loose grasp. Now going from C6 to C7, we go from this position to elbows extended and wrist flex. And that's going to be the key things that we want to look at for C7 because again, that elbow extension is going to be really helpful when we're trying to do some bed mobility, trying to scoot in bed, trying to do pop over transfers or slide board transfers. Uh, that elbow extension and, and the ability to push into the surface that a person's sitting on is going to, be, going to be super helpful. Next, we go from C7 to C8 through T1. And here we get some finger or fine motor movement involved, so you can do that however you want. I just kind of like to do this or this. Uh, just remember that at those levels, we're really looking at what fine motor movements does the person gain. And then once we get to T2 through T12, it's simple. We've got, I just do a little tap on the trunk. Just remember that it's all about trunk stability and postural control. And then L1 through S5, I tap the legs, understanding it's all about leg movement and bowel and bladder control. So hopefully just doing those simple movements could be an easy way to remember these different levels and the functional movements that a person might have at those levels. So that's the way that I memorize it. Again, just to go through that, C1 through C3. C4, breath with scapular elevation. Uh, C5, we get supination, elbow flexion, and some shoulder movement. C6, we get wrist extension. C7, we get um, elbow extension with wrist flexion. C8 through T1, we get some fine motor movement. T2 through T12, we get trunk. And L1 through S5, we get legs. I hope this information was helpful for you. If you did find it helpful, please let me know by clicking the like button down below or subscribing if you want more OT related content like this. Otherwise, thank you again for watching the OT Minute and I'll see you in the next video.